Welcome to the Fayetteville Robotics VEX V5 programming tutorial. This tutorial will teach you how to download code from your Chromebook to a V5 Cortex brain. First, you'll need a V5 setup. In this case, I'm using our simple gear that we created in our last video, which involves a V5 Cortex connected to a battery, and this cable in slot number one is connected to our gear train. In this case, it's a single gear mounted on a V5 motor. The only additional item you'll need is a USB cable. For this purposes, you'll need a micro USB cable connection, which has USB-A on one end and micro USB on the other. What we'll do next is we'll connect our Cortex using this cable. On the same end of your Cortex as your battery wire plugs into, you'll see directly next to the battery wire a micro USB plug. You'll attach the micro USB cable to this hole. Please note that it is unidirectional. The flat side of your cable has to plug into the flat side of the Cortex plug. Once that's done, we can set it down. The other end of our cable will be plugged into our computer or Chromebook. Now that it's plugged into our Chromebook, we'll go ahead and turn on our V5 Cortex. To make it a little more visible, I'm going to remove my screen and tilt my Cortex so that you can see the actual screen a little easier, but I do understand there is some glare. Now we're going to look at the coding website. The coding website at the bottom of this screen is codev5.vex.com. When you open that website, you'll see that it appears as you see on your screen. In this case, we'll be looking at a very basic code. We just want the gear to spin. So we'll start by telling our cortex here what is connected to it via the wire. To do that, we need to add a device. We're going to navigate to the right side of our screen, have this device button in the upper light, right. It is the second icon from the left right here. You'll notice it defaults to having zero devices. We need to add one, so we'll click Add a Device. The website then asks, what are you adding? There are many options available, but today we're just going to add a simple motor. So I'm going to click on the motor icon. The website then asks which port our motor is plugged into. We'll look back at our cortex and determine which wire is plugged into our motor. In this case, it's wire number one. So I'll select port number one. This next screen does allow you to make a few adjustments. You can change the name of your motor from motor one, which is the default, to any other name. And then you can also change which direction the gears work by using this normal or reverse button. For today's purposes, I'm going to leave it on normal. Your gear cartridge is either red, green, or blue. The default is blue. If you're not sure what you have, you can look in your motor, and there's a window right here next to where the axle sits uh, that matches the color. In this case, this motor is green, as is the one connected to my gear. So. I'll leave it on green. Then I'll click done. We now have a motor in our device list and I'll use this arrow in the upper right to shrink this window. Our coding screen is a standard block-based coding method. You'll have seen this before if you have ever used Scratch or a variety of other block coding sites. Our when started is an event handler. This simply allows the cortex or brain 
to know when to trigger the code that you're adding. In this case, our goal is to make our motor spin for five seconds and then turn off. To do that, we'll start by going over here to our selection of code. Specifically, we're in the motion section. And the first thing we're going to do is turn on our motor or spin that motor. So I'll click and drag our spin motor one forward block into our code window. We now want to wait five seconds. In order to wait, we need to control what is going on. So I'm gonna come down to the control section. I can reach that either by scrolling down or by clicking on the control icon on the left column. The wait block is the first block available. So I'm going to drag it underneath my spin motor forward. Because I want it to be five seconds, I'm going to change the value from one to five using my keyboard. Finally, I need my motor to turn off. So I'll scroll back to the top or use the motion button to reach my motion controls. And in this case, I'm going to stop motor one. This code is very simple. It turns the motor on, it waits five seconds, then it turns the motor off. And that's all of our goal for today. Now we need to download it to our Cortex. The first thing we're going to do is come up to the top and we're going to click on this box. Currently mine says untitled, yours may be different. This is the name of our program. So I'm going to name this program motor on five and save it. So motor on five, that's the name of my program. Then I'm gonna come over here to the right hand side and you'll notice that there's an icon called brain. I'm gonna click on the brain and you'll notice it says no brain connected. So it does not detect my cortex yet. I'll click connect. Then it will ask if I'm wanting to connect and I'm going to click continue. When I hit connect and continue, it brings up a new window. Yours may look a little different, but in this case, it's asking me which port do I want to choose? It is usually the top port, but it may be the second. If you try to connect to the first port and it fails, just go back and try again, selecting the second port. I'll hit connect. If I'm successful, my brain icon will turn green. Now I have a download button. So I'll click download. It will download the code to my VEX V5 Cortex and it goes fairly quickly. Here we are back at our Cortex. If we look at our Cortex, you can see that my code was downloaded. It says motor on five, and I have a new section of buttons. The first button says run. That's the only button we need to worry about for right now. So if I have everything connected correctly, when I press the run button, my gear should spin for five seconds. Let's find out. Obviously, we have a problem. All right, after a quick bit of troubleshooting, I discovered my problem. It turned out that the cable I was using was bad. This does occasionally happen, so don't get frustrated if something doesn't work perfectly the first time. These cables that connect your Cortex to your motor can go bad, as well as the USB cables that connect your computer or Chromebook to the Cortex. So occasionally you might just need to try a new cable. In this case, now that I've changed my cable out and I press run, my gear spins. After five seconds, it turns off because that's what our code asked it to do. And that's all we've done in order to download a piece of code. To get back to my screen, I'll press the power button, just click it once. It takes me back to this screen and I can press the red stop button. If I want to run again, I can press 
that triangular run button and it will activate my code as many times as I need to while I want it to work. And I'll stop that code again. But that's the basics for downloading code from the code v5.vex.com. That's code v5.vex.com, which is at the bottom of your screen. But it allows you to load any code you want onto a Cortex and then run that code from the Cortex as well. And that's it for the Fayetteville Robotics V5 programming tutorial.